What's up, CHFFL, or should I say, Annyeonghaseyo, CHFFL? You might notice that it is nighttime, although I'm not live, so I guess I could be tricking you. But I promise that in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it is 10.40 a.m. I am in South Korea. So you're getting a recorded video, and it's going to be pretty quick. We're just going to go through predictions last week and this week. Um, I was actually hoping to do a, a big normal video on the plane. There's no Wi-Fi on the plane, so I couldn't access the information I needed to shoot the video there. You do get this very nice backdrop of uh, Hwajong. Hwajong, which is the uh, suburb we were in outside of Seoul. It's like a tiny little time square, except it's very clean and safe and nobody makes you feel like they're going to stab you it's excellent um so enjoy that so i went three and three in week six on my predictions uh bring me to only 20 and 16 still on the season i am continuing to struggle which is why i have gone to where it is now sunday night i'm in the future so theoretically i already know what happens in every game this week uh for my team's sake if I lose this week to Stan, I, you got to consider it to be fire sale status. Just can't stay healthy. Um, even when there have been little sparks of hope, can't stay healthy, and that's ruining it. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, Mark survived in the game of the week against Bill, who drops one in five. Mark remains undefeated, and Grant was our team of the week, beating Swan. So now we can switch on over to our browsers. I'm going to do this like I do for the live stream, but just not live because I'm not sure that our Airbnb's internet could handle the stream and chat and everything and I, on my laptop, and I just don't feel like pushing it. So let's start with my game, get it out of the way, because I dropped another one last week as Minnie got 19 points from his kicker and David Montgomery, much like Nick Chubb earlier in the season, Got injured early in the game and left me with a low score, a loss, and no running back following the following week, possibly multiple weeks. Roshan Johnson also is injured, so my starting running backs are pathetic and sad. I mean Antonio Gibson and Latavius Murray. It's really going against JT. I mean, Taylor has a really tough matchup with Cleveland. So there's a possibility there that he puts up something close to a dud, even though he's Jonathan Taylor with Richardson being injured, that whole offense. Who knows what's happening? So there's a chance there, but DeAndre Swift has just been so solid this year. He's just go dogs. He's good. So I'm at a big disadvantage in terms of running back. And then you got Tyreek Hill is the number one playmaker in this game. I'm really counting on Josh Allen and Sam Laporta to give me any sort of a chance here. Fantasy Pros has Dan, doesn't matter what my name is, at a 93 this week and me at the bottom with an 83. As the proprietor of Cast, I have to be unbiased. And honestly, I think Stan wins this one, and I think this is probably the end of my season. Oh, that was really negative. Let's go on over now to Max and Soul Brothers and Marty, New Age Outlaws. I'm not doing any gimmicks this week with pretending to favor Marty or anything. We're just going to see what happens here. He's 2-4. and four. The year of Marty is not shaping up to what we were all hoping it would be. However, 43 points from the great stack of Trevor Lawrence and Christian Kirk on Thursday put him at a very strong projection this week. Fantasy Pros has him in an 87. Of course, that is before considering the solid Thursday performance. On the other side, Max coming off a nice win, uh, barely getting one on Stan and staying very competitive in the Fantasy Heart and Soul Conference is a 92 on Fantasy Pros. Had nobody in the Thursday game, so let's look at who he has going here. Josh Jacobs projected for 20 and 
that's been about about right. Josh Jacobs is a strong start. Christian McCaffrey questionable going into Monday night. Obviously, I'm really hoping that McCaffrey plays for my dynasty team's sake. Jameer Gibbs could finally have a good week for Marty with Craig Reynolds questionable and Montgomery out. See, uh, I'm going, I normally follow the Thursday points, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to take Marty here. No year of Marty reasoning, it's just following the Thursday points. We'll see what happens. Let's go back over here. Mark, undefeated. Yeah, I'm gonna. I am gonna make this game of the week, even though it looks bad for Mark because he's six and zero, and much like last week with Bill, it's how long can he keep that up? Unless who is Grant playing? No, um, no, that's not our game of the week. So yeah, we'll come back to Mark versus Wes. That's gonna be our game of the week. Bill versus Minnie. Bill gets twelve point seven from Chris Olave in his flex. On Thursday, just terrible, just terrible. Uh, Minnie has had nobody play yet, coming off of a win and looking stronger every week. Cooper Cup has come back, and I think he's on a two win streak. So, Minnie, signs of life for the first time in a while. Cup will be placing facing off with the Steelers this week. Um, Purdy coming off of one disappointing game, don't expect that to continue. Hill. On the quarterback carousel, is this real? Am I am I seeing this? He picked Jordan Love back up after he dropped him and Stan started him, and it was, yeah, okay. Sometimes ESPN doesn't load things in quite right. Bill paid eight dollars for Jordan Love out of waivers and is starting him again with uh, Justin Fields out. Poor Bill. Poor poor Bill. Otherwise, Bill is the highest team on Fantasy Pros for the week. And you know what? If you got a win for being the highest on Fantasy Pros, Bill would be going 7 and would be 7 and 0 after this week. Fortunately, you don't get that. Mini Fantasy Pros has up at 5th at a 94 a score and I think that's probably the highest that Mini has been. It shows kind of his rise throughout the year. Oh, I still like Bill here, and I know it's frustrating for him being the on-paper good team who hasn't been performing, and it's not picking me to win because it just keeps being bad, bad luck. But I have to go with the numbers. I still think Bill edges this one out. Eventually, the luck has to turn around, even if it's too late for him to get in the playoffs, right? All right, next. Parker. Gung, Gung Royalty versus Swan's New Walker Order. The Swan got three points from the Saints defense. Not great there, but we've seen a lot of negative scores from defenses this year. And then look at this bye week hell. Derrick Henry on bye, CeeDee Lamb on bye, Joe Burrow on bye. Top 20 running back, Miles Sanders out and on bye. Uh, and then, of course, remember that Jefferson and A-Chan are still on IR. So this is a very crippled Swans team, which makes it impressive that he's still projected at 110 after only three from the defense Thursday. Josh Reynolds, been a nice little surprise. Um, 8, 17, 10, other than one dud game, I'm not sure if he actually missed that for injury or not. He has been pretty consistent. That's a good fill-in there. And how long can the Raheem Mostert insane st season continue? We're going to keep asking ourselves that as long as it does. And there's no reason to bet against him in any one game right now. So he keeps Swan alive here. On the other hand, Parker, strong all around. Coming off also a good win. Dijon, Drone Ford, Keenan Allen has been one of the uh, great values of the draft. I think he got him in the third. Pico has been underrated, finally has him in the starting lineup. Uh, we're watching Parker's tight end situation. Is Michael Meyer finally the guy for Mayer? Michael Mayer? I don't know. Uh, he's really hoping that he has that tight end spot figured out. 
makes an own buy hopkins on buy makes it tough but I, not as tough as all the guys that swan has out fantasy pros has parker 95 Swan at 88 you gotta like parker here i gotta say fantasy pros is probably right i feel like i'm picking all the favorites but swan's team is just down like six or seven guys and i quite frankly don't want to believe that he could still be that good even with that many guys missing he needs to suffer for a couple of weeks until he gets back to full strength uh next grants k-pop kings versus banis's degeneration eckler as bad as my team has been banis has really been the bottom of the barrel and calvin ridley had another disappointing game with only 1.5 points on thursday not looking good grant got 24.7 from etn we're not going to waste a lot of time on this uh grant 96 on fantasy pros banis 87 higher than me this week although with all the injuries that kind of makes sense still i am taking grant now let's get back to what i thought is going to be the game of the week mark can you digs it sucker versus west psydux west with 39 from camara and the jags d camara could be i mean obviously great pickup in terms of timing for a very important game against the top team to go get him Plug him in just in time for the Thursday game. Beautiful all around. Could be one of the biggest moves of the season, even as we approach the trade deadline. And Wes on an absolute roll here, continuing to just shut up all the doubters and haters. Mahomes, White, Vontae Adams even has a lot of room for improvement right now. But then A.J. Brown, very solid in the flex, of course. Um, yeah, his team's good and at this point we have to admit that his team's good you can't just say that he's not there even if you don't like Rashad White um, now that he has Kamara this is a complete team ready to compete for a championship Mark as we noted earlier without Jamar Chase makes this tough makes it tough and Kyron Williams was someone he had been leaning on to make up for his weakness at running back and he doesn't have him now devonta smith's been disappointing did he bounce back last week i don't think so not really 9.4 he has not been the high-end wide receiver too mark was hoping um and of course stefan diggs is still fantastic but the, uh, does mark really have the strength to keep going here and i'm going to be a sellout and not pick any upsets this week i'm taking Wes here um it's still the game of the week because i think knocking off a 6-0 and team is worth focusing on it's worth just having interest in and of course Diggs could always put up 40 points i don't see it happening so that's it for us here from south korea remember that on korean government forms there are only two spaces for gender male and female and don't put any thursday players in your flex bill we'll see you next week mm -hmm.